Hey everyone, today I got four big Nintendo Switch stories for you. Uh, and a couple things I want to mention before we get to those stories. First off is obviously our October giveaway. It is Dreadtober. Yes, Metroid Dread is finally out. And we are giving away three copies of the game. I'll have more details on how to enter this giveaway later this month. But one of the base requirements is to be subscribed. Uh, in fact, we do giveaways all the time. Any of our regular viewers can tell you this. We do giveaways on our live streams and all that stuff. So, hey, if you would like a chance to win anything on our channel, let alone Metro Dread, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Plus, if you don't, I might kick your dog. Okay, no, I won't. Well, maybe. <laughs> uh, also, I have heard um, a few commenters over my last couple of videos have noted that they have heard a slight echo in some of the audio of my videos. Uh, specifically when I am towards the upper levels, the peaky levels and where I'm going crazy. Um, let me know if you still hear that echo. I have an idea of what was causing that. No, the, the second microphone I have is turned off, so it's not from that. Uh, there's something I turn on specifically for streaming that works in that environment, but probably isn't ideal for a um, actual video, and I've had it on for a couple weeks, so let me know if the audio's improved. That being said, let's get right into today's Nintendo news. Our, our first story is actually great news uh, for those of you that live in the UK or certain parts of region, the PAL region of uh, Nintendo Switch, because the bottom line is one of the key issues talked about when we were getting the N64 and Genesis, particularly for N64 uh, games releasing uh, on Nintendo Switch was, hey, look, they're adding these things as an expansion patch to Nintendo Switch Online, but there's been a fundamental issue with these games every time they come out, especially previously on Virtual Console, and that is that they run at 50 hertz, aka max out of 50 FPS. This was because at the time when these games came out, that was actually the standard in the PAL European region. See, here in the United States, we've been using the 60 hertz standard for a long time, but that wasn't the case there. So the games were running at 50, and every re-release officially has ran at 50 hertz. Well, Nintendo of Europe's official Twitter account came out and announced that, hey, you know what? Yeah, if you're playing the English version of these N64 games on Nintendo Switch Online, yep, it's gonna run at 60 hertz. This is obviously really great news for, say, people in the UK, but if you're from other regions of PAL and you use other languages, unfortunately, they're basically telling you, yep, it's still going to run at 50 hertz. So it's good news, but bad news because they're giving essentially special treatment to a single language. Now, this treatment is a, the obvious treatment that Nintendo can do because the 60 hertz English versions exist here in the United States. If I had to guess, they're just taking the US versions of the games and tossing that English version overseas because it's just easy they don't have to do any work to do that uh and if it's any other language i said sorry here's the pal version so again I, this is kind of an unfortunate thing where it's good news that there even is a 60 hertz available option but it sucks for those that aren't native english speakers because they might not want to be locked into that and it might not remind them of what they experienced when they were kids um and obviously 50 hertz is what you experience when you were kids but now that we're adults we obviously want something a little bit better than that we expect at least 60. so yeah it's kind of unfortunate that this isn't for everything but hey kudos to nintendo for at least giving the option because in the past they didn't even give you any option to get 60 hertz in the pal region for n64 games so it's a step in the right direction i just like to see them go all the way and again this doesn't even affect me i live in the united states uh, but I feel for people that want to play these old games and want to get that full 60 FPS experience, and you can't just because Nintendo won't let you. Plus, things running at 50 hertz on a current 60 hertz TV or better sometimes can lead to frame pacing issues as well. It, it's kind of a mess. So all we can do is hope that this step in the right direction leads to a more long-term solution. So our next story deals with Metroid Dread. Of course, we are giving away three copies of Metroid Dread. Please be subscribed if you would like a chance to win some. But here's the thing, Metroid Dread is something that we've been wondering what are the sales going to be? Because sure, I think anyone who follows a bunch of YouTubers in my space would say, hey, we want to get at least 3 million in sales just so we could force RGT85 to play a full playthrough of Balan Wonderland. That being said, uh, setting aside him kind of punishing himself with that, reality is we don't really know how well Metroid Dread is going to sell. We hope it sells well. We also know the game as reported by several outlets, 
is widely available to play on PC. It actually has been available to play on PC for over a week now uh, through emulation and illegal piracy. Of course, now that there's legal copies out there, you could obviously hack your version one Switch and dump the game yourself. So there's still legal ways you can still enjoy it on your PC, but reality is obviously piracy was running pretty rampant for this game, hence all of the Metroid leaks before launch. We'll see if piracy ramps up now. But what we do know is that Metroid Dread has some sort of launch numbers. We don't know what the exact numbers are, but there was announced today that it is the largest Metroid launch in UK history. It beat out Metroid Prime 3, which was the previous largest launch. Now, again, UK is just one region. It's not a huge region that's gonna be like, yeah, if it sells really well there, it's gonna end up selling 10 million worldwide. That's not necessarily always the case, but overperforming in a region where you have previously underperformed is notable. It's also notable because this was just physical. See, the Metro Prime 3 data seems to include digital as well. And obviously there's gonna be additional digital sales of Metroid Dread beyond physical. So physical sales of Metroid Dread alone are the best for a Metroid game ever, let alone counting digital in. So this is really, really good news. Obviously we'll know next week, Thursday, what launch, or this week, Thursday, actually, what launch sales were in Japan. Uh, we'll have to wait obviously a whole month and a half here before we know sales here in the US from the MPD. But reality is that Metroid Dread, at least for the first little bit of numbers we have in, which aren't real numbers, they're just kind of a statement, uh, is really, really good. So here's hoping that Metroid Dread can sell five plus million and that this convinces Nintendo to make more of these Metroidvania side-scrolling games because I don't want Dread to be the final one based on my experience with the game. Again, I have an impressions video coming at some point this week where I talk about my final thoughts on Metroid Dread because um, I'm still playing through the game, so I don't want to get too much into it, but it's pretty damn good. Let's just say that. So this has been, this next story is just something that we have known for a while, been rumored, heavily rumored. There's been some other things. The GTA trilogy, Grand Theft Auto trilogy, which is, you know, everything to do with the San Andreas, doesn't include obviously GTA 5. Uh, yeah, it's coming to Nintendo Switch. It's also coming to other platforms. Uh, and it hasn't really technically been officially announced per se. Uh, there's no official release date, although now we have kind of a leak for that release date of December 7th. Um, the games supposedly are just going to be upgraded textures. It says supposedly comes December 7th and has graphical improvements, but it's supposed to have the same look and feel. This feels like an HD sort of remastering port kind of thing. Think like, um, you know, Twilight Princess HD or something to that ilk. I, it doesn't sound like it's anything major. Does look like it's coming to Nintendo Switch and other platforms. Uh, we're still waiting for like all the official information to come out about this uh, thing. And we're not really sure why they're holding back officially. There could be some magical reveal they plan to do in the next couple of months to do a huge blowout, maybe tied into some Grand Theft Auto 5 DLC or something. I have no idea, uh, but this definitely feels like it's something that's coming. There's just way too much fire, way too many outlets reporting on it, way too many retailers reporting on it, way too many, um, you know, ratings coming in from ratings boards for it. So it's pretty obvious this is coming. Uh, and yeah, now we just need to wait for all of the exact official information, including like an actual trailer so we can actually see what it looks like. Right now we're just reading what it looks like rather than seeing it. So yeah, 2K, Rockstar. Let's just let the lid off already, right? Like this is one of the worst kept secrets in the video game industry at this exact moment. So for our last story, I'm gonna play a little Switch OLED, play some more Metroid Dread here. Um, okay, let's actually get into what why I'm touching a Switch OLED, which yes, is using the Neo Grip. Uh, at least I'm using the Neo Grip from Skull and Company. Here's the thing. Nintendo has issued a warning for this system. Uh, it's an interesting warning because they act like it's a bigger deal than it necessarily is, but it's also something that I personally don't think anyone should really even concern themselves with. But when you buy a Switch OLED, there is a thin um, layer you'll notice on it if you look closely. By the way, you might not even notice it unless you're looking for it, but if you turn your thing to a certain angle, you might see a little on the edge where it looks like there's some sort of film on top of the Switch OLED. And the thing is, these films aren't new. A lot of places use them, but some people might look at that as, well, hey, maybe that's just a protective piece of plastic for shipping. Let me peel that off. It's very common on glass to have a protective film of plastic. So let me peel that off. And by the way, it's extremely hard to peel off. You can get it off, uh, but it's, it's not meant to come off, which is why it's so difficult. 
and Nintendo has warned people to not take that film off, that it is for your protection, and that that film is, you know, almost essential for the OLED. The thing is, it's not essential. I actually have a friend of mine who successfully took his off, uh, and his Switch OLED's working just fine. So why is Nintendo warning against taking this film off if it doesn't seem to really ruin the screen to do so? Which, by the way, there are times that it does. If you remove the film on, say, a, a Galaxy Fold device, it actually will ruin the screen, and you broke your device, and you can't do anything about it. Even if you try to put the film back on, it just doesn't work the same again. So you can remove the one on Switch OLED, but you shouldn't. Now, let me explain what this film does. There seems to be two main things it does. One of them is supposedly light refraction. Now, I can't really prove that the light refraction does anything. I think it's more of a Nintendo fluff term, but whatever, light refraction supposedly, I guess is supposed to help with burn in or something. I have no idea. Based on everything I've been able to look up online, light refraction doesn't really seem to matter for this system. But what does matter, and this is probably really why they did it, is because Sometimes children are going to be playing Switch OLED, right? A lot of parents might buy them Switch OLEDs to put underneath their Christmas tree or whatever holiday they're celebrating, birthday parties, etc. And here's the thing. Unlike the original Switch, this uses a glass screen rather than a plastic one. The original Switch and Switch Lite both use plastic screens, which are extremely easy to scratch, but you basically can't shatter it. So there's no way to really do damage to that screen that's going to hurt the end consumer. On a glass front screen, it's actually quite easy to shatter. You could just do one drop, and if you hit just right, the glass will shatter. We see this with phones all the time, and how many kids have phones from their parents that the glass is completely shattered, and it might not even be shattered when they gave it to the kid. The kid dropped the device, the kid threw it to the device, the kid did something that caused, just like that actually, uh, the screen to break. So here's the thing. Kids break screens all the time. This has been a very common thing for a long time. So Nintendo thought ahead and said, hey, look, there actually is a super easy solution to this, not to prevent the breaking, but to prevent kids from cutting themselves on it. Plus, OLED has organic material in it. There's a slight chance that organic material could leak out through a crack. It's highly likely not going to happen and it probably won't even be that harmful. But bottom line is, what happens is, um, if this shatters, it'll still feel smooth to the touch. Why? because of that thin film they put on there. It kind of holds it all together, if that makes sense, in case of shattering. Uh, so it doesn't prevent it from shattering, but it prevents you from cutting yourself if it is shattered. Still, it's gonna look weird to have a broken screen and all that, but that's neither here nor there. So, should you remove it? No. Is it safe to put a, what well, like I have, I have a tempered glass screen protector on here. Is it safe to put a screen protector on top of it? Absolutely. You can put a screen protector on, take it off, put it on, take it off. It is not going to peel up that layer. That layer is very well, I don't know if you call it glue, whatever material they're using to stick it down, it's very well stuck to the screen, and it does not impact the quality of the screen. My friend who removed his, when we looked at mine, uh, without the screen protector on that I have on now versus his, it looked exactly the same. It didn't look like there was any difference. So that film didn't do anything. Plus, notably, obviously, the one reason why you might consider moving that film is that film does put a layer between your finger and the glass screen. So you might think it creates a feel difference, a touch difference. And I can confirm having touched one without the film on and having touched mine with the film on and then obviously mine with the, the, the glass screen protector that I have on it right now. Uh, yeah, it feels exactly the same. Whatever that thin layer is does not ruin the feel of the system because that could have been one reason why people might legitimately want to remove that film is if it feels plasticky when you're using the touchscreen, but it doesn't. It feels very much exactly the same with or without that film, at least based on my ability, obviously my sense of touch. Maybe it's different than your sense of touch. My friend felt the same way. My fiance felt the same way. So everybody kind of felt, at least that I have around me, that it feels the same. So bottom line is you're safe to put a screen protector on it. There's no reason to really peel it off. Uh, and it's just there to help protect you or children or anybody else from cutting themselves. As an example, our iPod right now has a shattered screen because my dog decided to grab it and run, and when he grabbed it, he bit down and it broke the glass on the screen. Still works, but obviously when you put your finger over it, it doesn't have that film, so it actually will cut your finger, uh, or micro cut as ours does. It doesn't really like slice it open, but it does do little micro cuts. Um, and yeah, that's what this prevents from happening in case a screen was broken. And kids tend to sometimes break screens but still want to use devices anyways. Adults are that way as well because hey, 350 bucks, 
ain't cheap. Like, that's a lot of money for some people. It's not as much as like buying an iPhone, you know, get, getting the old $1,000 plus iPhones or Samsung devices or tablets or, you know, this is like a $1,500 laptop. It's not that expensive, but they're still pricey. So just something to kind of consider. Nintendo does warn you not to do it. Um, doesn't mean you can't do it, but it also doesn't mean that you should do it. There's not really any benefit to doing it unless for some reason you just have that, that certain level of OCD that's just like, dude, I could just tell it's there. I could see on the little corner that it's just like, I don't know, a 0.001 of a millimeter away from the edge. I need to peel that thing off. Like, I get it. It might really bug some people. It won't harm your switch to remove it. It is difficult to remove it. You have a high chance of scratching your system doing it. Um, some people might wonder if that film is actually super scratchable. It's not. Um, I, I haven't done a hardness test yet, and maybe that's something I will do on my broken OLEDs. It's already broken, so who cares if I do a hardness test on it? Uh, but I have a feeling that it, it doesn't appear like it's scratching anymore. So I don't know. Just my a personal opinion, don't remove it. Nintendo tells you not to remove it as well. I don't really see a reason. I think there's just a risk of you damaging your screen more than anything, even though I have a friend who removed it without doing so. Anyways, folks, I'm Nintendo RoboJazz from Nintendo Prime. Uh, I gotta go. I got more to do today. I got some more Metroid Dread to play. I got work and other things I gotta get to. But you guys are amazing. Hopefully you got informed by this video, and I will catch you guys in the next video.